What's up, YouTube? Miss Montana DeLeon here. Today is, oh my gosh, like three weeks after I've gotten here after, at August 24th. So it's like three weeks later. Um, my training got cut short. My PSD fine student driver training got cut short after two weeks of being on the road. I was really supposed to be out three weeks, my trainer said. Because my trainer had a death in the family, so I was unable to finish my initial part of the training. And that's at $200 a week stage where you're not an employee, not paid like an employee yet. The three to $700 a week that they pay you in training. So I'm not to that stage yet and I do not have my hard CDL license. I still have my permit. So I had to come back to campus. They had to figure out what they were going to do with me. Either they were going to send me out with a, another trainer to finish out my training or... What they did was they evaluated me once I got here. So I was training on a Peterbilt. So I had to come back here and get evaluated on a Freightliner, which is a lot different. The pattern on the shifter is the same. The give is a lot less than the Peterbilt. So the give on the Peterbilt is like this, and the give on the Freightliner is like this. So it's, it took a little, I'm a little, mm, because I have to adjust to driving a Freightliner over a Peterbilt. Peterbilt is really smooth, flows really nicely. The freight line was a little tougher for me. So, we did the road evaluation test. Said I was good. So then they put me with an instructor out here. Really, really good instructor. One of the top instructors out here. I think he was one like top instructor, top trainer or something like that. Um, nine years in a row or something like that. So his name is Danny Gibson. Great teacher, wonderful man. Gives direction well. Makes things very, very clear and very, very easy for you. So I'm out on the training pad doing the back and maneuvers with him. We did parallel parking. Everything he said, I did it. It was amazingly easy. Today we did offset backing. Um, everything he said, I mean, he really didn't give me the step-by-step -step like he did yesterday. But I kind of got it for the most part. For the first part, I got it. The second part, I was kind of messing up because my stomach was hurting. I was just like ready to go back to the Millennium Building. So I wasn't feeling very well. But I'll be back on it tomorrow. Um, so then, I think he's going to run me through the three stages of the testing. So it's going to be pre-trip, meaning I have to go over the engine and name all the parts and the trailer and the coupling and all that stuff. A brake test. He's going to run through that with me to make sure I'm A1 on that. The backing, he's going to take me on the road test. The, the actual testing is going to be on and kind of run me through that as well and prepare me to test out to actually get my CDL license. So that's where I'm at right now. I've been here two or three days, I think two days, three days. Um, I don't know how much longer I'll be here, don't know. This is almost like the accelerated program and people who already have their CDLs that come to Prime that want to work for Prime usually go through an accelerated program. I think they test out on the simulators to see how well you drive already even though you already have your CDL. The simulators are shit man, they're garbage. I got in the fucking simulator, then got in the real truck, and the simulator fucked me up. Like, the simulator will fuck you up. I don't like the simulator at all. The simulator is a great tool if you're trying to learn the gear pattern. Like, if you're trying to learn how to shift from 1 to 10, it's great for that. It's great for that, and I think that's really all it's great for. But back in and all the other stuff trying to get a feel for the truck and hear how it sounds when you're doing certain things behind the wheel it's not good it fucks you up and it makes you a bad driver once you get in a real truck it really it's a hindrance anything besides learning the gear pattern and shifting and double clutching and things like that it's good for that but anything after that it will fuck you up like fucks you up the simulator mm. anyway but um, once you get in a real truck you have to be like damn near trained again in a real truck because the simulator erase everything you learn about the simulator once you get in a real truck it's just fucking terrible i hated it i mean so many people said it just fucked them up once they got in a real truck no but it did teach me the gear pattern and it did teach me to double clutch that was they should just leave it at that and they should like put less time on the simulator and more time on the free trip that'd be amazing that'd be like a great idea for students out here um as far as what's needed and then they, when they do pre-trip, they need to teach you pre-trip on different trucks because the pre-trip on the Freightliner is totally different from, not totally different, but there are some variances 
from the Peterbilt. I'm quite sure there are some variances from the internationals that I've seen out there. I've even seen some Kentworths out there. All these engines are not exactly the same, so the free trip they give you is only for one truck. And I got on a totally different truck, and it was just... So they got to work on that, too. Um, they change a lot of stuff here from month to month, I hear. So things in this video may be outdated by the time some people get to it, but that that is what it is. So I'm out here. I still don't have my CDL. Like I said, I'll update you guys. Once I get in my CDL, once I get my CDL and I go on the road with a trainer for TNT, I'll come back and update you guys once that happens. You don't have to come ask me, are you there yet? You know, in the TNT, I'll make a video once I'm there. It's been kind of busy, very fast paced, so I really haven't been having time to upload videos or anything like that. So I just uploaded a bunch of videos when I did have time. But, um, yeah, that's the update on me. I'm still loving it. It's still fun. It's still interesting. It's still something totally out of my comfort zone. And I've adjusted and I've gotten comfortable with it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's, it's different. It's different. It's, it's different for me. Something I probably would never have thought of doing, but it's interesting. I'm very intrigued by it. Um, driving a truck is cool. It's easy. It's just like with anything you learn, you just get in, you, you get taught a couple of times, you do it repetitiously and you'll, you'll learn. But I've, I've, I've owned a stick shift car. When I bought the car, I didn't know how to drive it. I had the owner, you know, give me a quick little rundown on how to take it home. I did that. When I bought my motorcycle, my first Suzuki, I had my brother come pick it up from the dealership for me because I didn't know how to drive it or ride it. So he taught me that night how to ride and I learned how to ride since that night on for like four years straight. Same thing with the truck. Just teach me how to drive it and I'll, I'll catch on. Like, it's no biggie. Um, it's a lot more watching out being careful because you got like 80,000 pounds on the road that just crush somebody and kill somebody and run somebody in a ditch like it's a lot more responsibility it's a lot more looking around so it's not driving you look around motorcycles is cutting you off and shit little mo most motorcycles and mopeds is cutting you off and shit it was fucking crazy like construction and just uh, so much like uh, it's a lot it's a lot of responsibility. It's not just sitting there driving. It's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of attentiveness. It's a lot of, um, it's just, it's just, a, it's a lot. So trucking isn't easy. Truck drivers have a really huge responsibility on that road. And they're responsible for not only themselves, but all the people around them when you come through with that big ass truck. Like it's, it's a lot that you have to pay attention to. Like a lot. You have to pay attention to detail a lot. You have to be very coordinate you know how to shift gears and downshift and upshift and watch your speedometer and your rpms and and watch your mirrors and make sure your trailer is straight and make sure you're not you know veering off the road keep your hands on the wheel keeping the wheel steady it's so much um but if you're a very coordinated person you can get it and it's easy but anyway i'm about to go to sleep i just went out to the little japanese restaurant up the street and had dinner with some people and yeah i'm about to lay down and take a nap in my room but yeah, I'm about to go ahead and take a nap. I'll talk to y'all later. Love some. Love some. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Bye.